Well, good evening, Solid Rock Nation, and Happy New Year. Many blessings to you uh, for this new year that God has brought us into. Well, you know, I'm really excited about the next move of God in Solid Rock. And tonight I want us to take a look at a much used scripture to help us trust God as we move forward in 2022. Um, I just want to say thank you all so much for all of the blessings and all the things that we were able to get done in 2021. Uh, even in the midst of a pandemic, God is still good and he's still blessing. And I want us to be thankful for all that he has already given us and all that he has yet to use us to do to help build his kingdom in 2022. Thank you all for having the join in with us via virt, uh, virtual services. Uh, because of the rise in the pandemic, we will only be having virtual service, Bible study and church uh, on Sunday morning. So please continue to join in with us um, uh, as we continue to wait on the Lord to finish doing what he's doing for us to do what it is he desires of us to do. So again, thank you all so much. Um, let's move right into the word. Sometimes uh, we let our circumstances, both good and bad, hold us back from moving in the direction that God wants us to go. And I need us to understand that the direction that God really wants us to go is forward. Amen. And, and sometimes now, uh, for some time, for, for, for quite a while now, God has uh, put in my spirit to shift and move forward. Shift and move forward. Uh, and now what that means to me and what it means to you might be two different things, but everywhere I look, the concept keep popping up. And, and it's what's staring in my spirit, really, saints of God, uh, is to shift and move forward. Shift and move forward. And, you know, and I don't believe it's just uh, for me. I believe it's the season for Solid Rock Ministry International. It's time... It's the time that we're in. It's the time now. And I believe that God wants his people to get and have a forward, moving forward mentality. He, he wants us to think outside of the box and, and think about things and do things different than what we've ever done before. And it's our season uh, to move forward now. And I want us to go to Exodus chapter 14. And I'm going to read the whole story about Moses and the children crossing um, the Red Sea on dry land, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, go verse by verse through, through verses 12 through 17 or 18, I think it is, and we'll talk uh, about what I believe God is saying to us as he's preparing us to move forward. Um, so let's read uh, Exodus 14, um, beginning at verse number one. I think we'll be all right. And uh, tonight I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Uh, you'll find it there, and then I'll, I'll probably uh, teach from the King, New King James Version. Uh, but I just want to read it from the New Living Translation so it'll be a lot easier for us to interpret. The Bible says in Exodus 14, beginning at verse number one, um, Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. He said, order the Israelites to turn back and camp by, camp by Paharoth, Paharoth, between Migdal and the sea. Camp there along the shore, across from Baal Zephon. Then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. They are trapped in the wilderness. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase after you. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh, and his old army. God says, I've already planned this. And after this, the Egyptian will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites camped there as they were told. Uh, verse number five. And when word reached the king of, Israel, of Egypt that the Israelites had, had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds, the Bible says. What have we done? Letting all those Israelite slaves get away, they asked. So Pharaoh hardened, uh, harnessed his chariot called up his troops. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best chariots, along with the rest of the chariots of Egypt, each with his commander. Then the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So he chased after the people of uh, Israel, who had left with fists raised in defiance. 
Verse 9, the Egyptians after them, chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, all his horses, all his chariots, his charioteers, and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore near Pahara, across from Baal Zephon. And Pharaoh approached the, pe approached the people of God, looked up, and as, let me stop again, verse number 10, very important verse. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord. Verse 11, and they said unto Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you, verse 12, that this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, verse 13, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Verse 14, the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Verse 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving, to move forward, somebody. Pick up your staff, raise your hand over the sea, divide the waters so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Come on, somebody. Verse 17, and I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they will charge in after the Israelites. My glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots, his charioteers. And when my glory is displayed through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Um, verse 10 again. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Wow, amen. Um, backdrop to the story. So what's happening is God's people have been living in Egypt uh, for 400 years now. They've been living as slaves, not as warriors, not as people to fight, but as slaves. They were overworked, underpaid, stressed, and worn out. They were pushed down, held back. And the time comes when God says, enough is enough. The time is now. I want my people to move forward. Wow. So what happens is God graciously uh, delivers them from their enemy and Pharaoh releases them and lets them go. And uh, they don't get very far as they're going before uh, their enemy comes after them to enslave them again, to bring them back into Egypt and make them slaves. Uh, and, and the Bible says in verse 10, as soon as the Israelites see Pharaoh and all his chariots coming down on them, they panic. Like most people would, they began to panic because, again, they were not warriors. They were just peasants who were working and doing what slaves do. Uh, they were not warriors. They were slaves. Uh, let me read verse 10. And as Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, uh, and they were so afraid. Wow. First thing I want to tell us tonight is... Uh, the first thing that keeps us from moving forward is fear. Uh, they, they, they face fear. Uh, so they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And I, I want us to understand, sometimes your circumstances don't seem very good and your situation isn't any better and possibly is getting even worse. With your eyes on what's around you, looking at all the COVID and the new virus spreading like wildfire, we are tempted to become fearful. But what does fear do to a man? Fear knocks the wind out of him. Fear stops him. Fear paralyzes him in his tracks. Uh, in the original language, it says that fear kills him. Fear does this, y'all. Fear corrodes our confidence in God's goodness. Let me say it again. Fear corrodes our confidence in God's goodness. Mm. It will, it will unleash a swarm of doubts, right? It'll give us the perception that we've lost control, 
And it'll also shape the way we live if we will embrace fear. Fear will shape the way you live. And when, what, what do you mean, Pastor? I mean, when fear shapes our lives, safety becomes our little G-O-D. We try to stay safe and we try not to do anything uh, on the edge. And when safety becomes our God, we worship what I like to call a risk-free life. Wow. We like to stay in the safety zone, you know. Uh, and when you're in the safety zone, you won't love like you ought to. Uh, and, and when you don't love like you should, can, can you do anything great? And of course, the answer is no. Uh, fear, when you're fear-filled, uh, you can't love deeply because love is risky. Uh, you can't love until you give it away. Uh, you can't give to the poor because giving has no guarantee of return. The fear-filled person can't dream wildly uh, because what happens if their dream sputters and fail? What, what, what you do when you fear is you worship safety and safety uh, emasculates greatness. So, you know, but, but the Bible teaches that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. In Romans 8, 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Is that, is that right? So what I'm saying to us, Solid Rock Nation, is fear, just like the uh, Egyptians in the text, want to put you back in bondage. Fear wants to put our ministry back in bondage. And the temptation will be great to go backwards or to desire the things that we've done in the past. And, and listen, but we got to move forward. We cannot be fearful. Uh, we got to trust God as we move forward. Then let's go to verse 11. Verse 11 says, then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so, so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? What, what's the second thing I want to teach you? Tonight, they, uh, they wanted to hold on to what was behind them. They were looking at their past. They said, Moses, didn't we tell you this was going to happen? Didn't we tell you we didn't want to come out here? Uh, but let me, give you, let me give you a statement for good students who are taking notes. Moving forward is as much about discovering what we must leave behind as it is about embracing what we uh, must keep to move forward. Let me say it again. Moving forward is as much about discovering what we must leave behind as it is about embracing what we can keep to move forward. In other words, uh, you got to let some stuff go. You got to let some stuff behind you go. You got to leave it just there uh, in your past. And we got to embrace what's moving forward. Well, we got to know the difference between what, it, what we need to leave behind and what it takes for us to keep moving forward. Uh, so what that really points to is that our ministry uh, is at a point, a major decision point, in, in, in our ministry right now. We, we, we're at a place, Solid Rock, where uh, we got to do some things different in order to move forward. Why, Pastor? Because we can't embrace Moses and keep Pharaoh. Pharaoh was bondage. Moses is freedom. We can't embrace Moses unless we let Pharaoh go. Is that right? Uh, we, can't, we, can't, we can't embrace the promised land and stay in Egypt. Is that right? We, we, we just can't do both and stay in, if you want to stay in Egypt, then certainly you, you can't, I'm sorry, certainly you, you, you got to get out of, out of Egypt before you can go into the promised land. Uh, not only that, we can't embrace freedom and still have a slave mentality. And I submit to you that sometimes we are, we are still caught up in the things of the past and everything about Pharaoh, everything about Egypt, everything about the slave mentality represents Satan, the world, and, and, and the world's ways. Is that right? Um, but when God miraculously delivered us, called us out, and separated us, he didn't intend for us, Solid Rock Nation, to, teach, to keep going back to our old ways. He said, I'm doing a new thing. Is that, is that right? Uh, have you not known? Have you not heard? But let me read Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse number 12 in the New Living Translation. Look at what Paul is saying here. Paul said, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. He said, but what I do is I press on, I move forward is what he's saying, to possess that perfection of which Christ Jesus first 
possess me. Verse 13, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it yet, but I focus on this one thing. Hear me. Paul says, I focus on this one thing. What is it, Paul? Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. He said, I press on. I'm moving forward, he says, to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Verse 15, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. And if you agree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. Verse 16, but we must hold on to the progress we've made already. Mm. Dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine, Paul says, and learn from those who follow our example. 18, for I've told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. Let me read it again. There are many whose conduct shows that they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only on about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven, saints of God. Somebody ought to say amen. Rather than live like you're dying, live like you're living for eternity. Wow. We got to focus, the text says, on one thing, leaving behind past relationships, leaving behind past, place, past places, leaving behind past mentalities, leaving behind past hurts so that we can fully embrace what we're moving towards, so we can move forward. Verse 12, let me go back to the text. Verse number 12, look what it says. It says, is this not the word that we told you in Egypt? saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. You know, and I imagine just like some of us, uh, some wanted to give up, some wanted to quit, some wanted to throw in the towel. But there were some like Joshua and Caleb who probably wanted to fight. So third thing I want to tell you, sometimes you get to a place where you think your only options are to surrender or fight. But let me tell you something, God always has more options than we can see. Don't limit God by your small thinking. You don't have to fight. You don't have to, uh, uh, you don't have to surrender. What we have to do is trust God. And then I, I know, I know, I hear you. I hear you in my spirit. Maybe you think some things are taking place that just aren't right. Maybe you feel like you've been treated unfairly. I hear you. Maybe you feel like you've been lied to. Maybe, you, maybe you've been led in the wrong directions. Uh, maybe things don't seem to be going right. And it looks impossible to keep going forward as things are unfolding. Um, and so the question I raise is what or who is behind you that's pushing you to the limit? The question becomes then, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to quit? Are you going to surrender? Are you going to lay down and die? Or maybe you'll just snap, blow up, fight back, and stand up for yourself. Have you ever thought that, that there could be more than two options, the two obvious options, to lay down and die or stand up and fight, the two most frequent options, the two that causes chaos, the two that can hurt people, the two options that are, are often more times than not do more harm than they do good? But look at what God says, uh, what Moses says to the people in verse number 13 of the text in, in Exodus 14. He says, don't be afraid. He said, what you really need to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. He says, look, check this out. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see them again no more forever. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So what, 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 is, what is it that Moses is really saying to the children of Israel? Fourth thing I want to tell you tonight. He's really saying, trust God. Solid Rock Nation, I'm asking us to, to, tonight to just trust God. I, I, I know it doesn't look good and I know uh, that it can be weary and I know that it is different. And, and, and I know, I, I hear you, I see you, I feel you, I understand. 
It makes sense because the children of Israel had the Red Sea in front of them and Pharaoh coming down on them from behind, knowing that Pharaoh and his 600 chariots and all his charioteers, all of them were going to destroy the children of Israel. They didn't know how to fight, had nothing to fight with, wasn't in a position to fight. Is that all right? But Moses says, look, all I need you to do is just stand still. If you stand still, you'll see the salvation of God. Uh, and he'll accomplish it before us today. And, and, and listen, in other words, he's saying, quit acting fearful. Mm. Quit, quit, quit acting like things are out of control. God's got this. Shout to somebody, God's got this. Uh, when the enemy comes against you, stand. Resist the temptation to deal with things your way. Listen, y'all, we've been dealing with stuff our way, and our way is not always God's way. Is that right? All we need to do is stand still and watch God take care of the problem. When we do it God's way, we will win. Stand still, trust, and watch God fight for you. We don't have to fight. Uh, 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 what Moses said to the people is, in verse 14, the Lord will fight for you, and you shall just hold your peace. All you got to do is be still and honor God. Be still and honor God. Trust God in all that we do. And I'm telling you, sometimes we only trust what we can see. And because the children of Israel saw uh, the Pharaoh and his army coming down on them, they were saying, it's over. We should have stayed. We should have stayed back and, and, and kept on being slaves. But God says it's time out for being slaves. I want you to build a kingdom and I'm going to use you to show Pharaoh and all the Egyptians who God, who I really am, God says. Read number verse 15. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Now the children are ready to crucify him because the Egyptians are bearing down on him. And, and, and the Lord said to Moses, he didn't speak to the congregation. He spoke to the leader. And this is what he says. He says, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. He said, move forward, Moses. Huh. God saying, quit, quit crying. Quit complaining. Quit, quit, quit focusing on what's behind you. Quit fretting over the issues in the past. It's time, Solid Rock Nation, to move forward. And I know you don't see how we can do it, but can you only imagine what the children of Israel, what Moses was saying? Um, what? Move forward. Lord, don't you see that it's a Red Sea in front of us and we can't walk on water? I can't. I, how do I move forward? How do I move forward? You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm telling you, because you don't see it does not mean that God cannot make a way. And so he says, move forward. And then look at what he says in verse number 16. He tells them how to move forward. I'm telling you, when you trust God and you believe God, he'll show you the answer to all the questions that you have. He says in verse number 16, but lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Do what? Do what? Lift up your rod, stretch out the sea, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Now, now, you, now we can move forward. But the sixth thing I need to tell you is, in order to move forward, we got to move forward in faith. Move forward? What? God, the sea is still in front of us. And somebody listening tonight, I, I'm talking directly to you tonight. Uh, you can witness that you couldn't see a way out, and God turned it around in your favor. When there was no possible way out in the natural, God stepped in and performed the supernatural. I'm telling somebody tonight, when God is for us, he'll make a way for us. Is that right? When there seems to be no way, he makes the impossible possible. Listen, you got to remember, saints of God, you got to move forward in faith. You got to know that with God, all things are possible. What did he say? He says, look, all I need you to do, Moses, is have the faith. Now, this is this, have the faith to lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it. Lord, I've never done anything like that. I don't know how me and this rod uh, can, can, can make that happen. But Moses, do you remember 
when I told you to throw your rod down and it became a snake and you grabbed the snake by the tail and it went back to being a rod again? Do you remember uh, the, the, the 11 plagues that I brought forth before our Pharaoh would let you all go? We got to have faith in the ability of God and not the ability of man. And then when we have faith in God, we can watch God move us forward. Trust God and watch him do the impossible. It's got to be according to your faith. Uh, listen, listen, Moses had to lift up the rod in faith. I don't know what's going to happen, but he said lift up the rod. And guess what, y'all? I'm going to lift up the rod. I don't know how it's going to work. He said stretch out your hand before God. And the sea will divide, and divide the sea. God will divide it. You don't, you don't have to do anything. Lift up your rod and watch God work in your favor. Lift up your rod and watch God do all that needs to be done. Lift up your rod and God, and God will bring you through. Somebody got to take your rod, take your rod and just lift it up. Take your rod and just lift it up. Stretch out your hands over your situation and watch God begin to work in your favor. Stretch out your hand. I got my rod right here and my staff right here. And all I need to do is be obedient to God. And when the situations begin to arise in my life, God tells me what to do. You got to have the faith to lift up your rod. You got to have the faith to say, God, I trust you. You got to have the faith to stretch out your hand over your situation. Stretch out your hand over your circumstances, stretch out your hands over what's going on and trust God, move forward in faith, trust God. And look at what he says in verse number 17. He says, and I will indeed harden the heart of the Egyptians and they shall follow you all into the sea. And then I will gain honor over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. And when I gain honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen, the last thing I want to tell you tonight, your journey may just be your testimony. Wow. Your journey may just be your testimony. God says, I'm going to use this as a testimony that the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord and I will gain honor for myself over Pharaoh. Listen, y'all, you may be going through. God may use your journey. God may use your test. God may use your faith. God may use your ability to move forward, to make himself known to the same people that are trying to hold you back. Help me, Holy Ghost. Let me say it again. Uh, God might use your journey, your situation, your sickness, or your healing, uh, your faith, your ability he might tell you, just move forward in faith. And when you do, he says, I'll make myself known to the same people that are trying to hold you back. They will know that I am God and that I am fighting for you. Solid Rock, we don't have to fight. All we got to do is trust God. Let's, let's just trust God and watch God work. And, I, and, I, and I'm telling you, I'm stretching out. I'm telling you, I'm stretching out my rod over our circumstances. I'm stretching out my rod over our finances. I'm stretching out our rod uh, of love over all our situations that we might be able to trust God in all that we're doing and all that he's asking us to do. I'm stretching out as the under shepherd. I'm stretching out over every ministry in the church in 2022. I'm stretching out our rod, and we're going to watch God work on our behalf. We're going to watch him do the miraculous on our behalf. We're going to ask him to just make a way out of no way on our behalf. And I believe him for it right now. I'm trusting him for it right now. And I want you, Solid Rock Nation, to join in with me and trust God to move on our behalf. Trust God to, to do some things that only he can do. Trust God to do the supernatural, uh, do the impossible. Uh, when it's too hard for man, it's getting just right with God. Amen. Uh, let's, let's, let's just review real quickly uh, the seven things that we've been over. In verse 10, he said, don't fear. Because you can't see it don't mean that God is not able to do it. Cry out to the Lord, the Bible says. Uh, the second thing, uh, you can't hold on to what's behind you. 
You got to let go of that stuff that's behind and press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus found in verse number 11. Verse 12, uh, you got to have more. You, you got to understand that God always has more options than we can see. We don't have to surrender. We don't have to fight back. Moses said to the children of Israel, stand still and see the salvation of God. We got more options than we see available to us. Let me tell you something. Nobody in their wildest dream could have thought that God was going to part the Red Sea and the pillar of cloud. And let me help somebody. The pillar of cloud went uh, that was in front of them went behind them and separated Pharaoh from the children of Israel all night long. But listen, the Bible says in the earlier verses that the children of the, the Israel, the Egyptians were coming down on them. They were upon them and they were afraid. But now the pillar of cloud, read a little further in the text. The pillow of cloud goes behind, and at night it becomes a pillow of fire, and it separates the Egyptians from the Israelites as God separates the, 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 the Red Sea, and, and a strong wind blows all night uh, to, to dry the land that they can go across. And go, when you read the text, you'll find out that God, uh, had, you know, they all got across. And of course, when they got across, he says to Moses again, stretch out your rod again. That, that, that same rod that you had before, stretch it out again. And when you stretch it out this time, watch God pull the waters back down off the walls and destroy the Egyptians. And he, the Egyptians. And he says to them, you will never see them again forever. Wow. Verse 13 and 14, trust God. Trust God. We got to trust God. Fifth thing. Verse 15, move forward. That's what he says. He says, look, why you stand here? Why you stand here crying to me? Tell the children of Israel, it's time to move forward. Solid Rock Nation, I declare and decree uh, that it's time for us to shift and move forward. It's time for us to shift and move forward. Sixth thing, but we got to move forward in faith. We got to move forward knowing that God is going to do what only God can do. Verse number 16, we got to move forward and trust God to do all that he says he's going to do. It is up to him how he does what he does. And like I said, nobody in their wildest dream could have thought that God was going to part the Red Sea and allow them to cross on dry land. But we have to do what we do in faith. Whatever he tells us to do, let's do that in faith. If it's simple as stretching out your rod, uh, uh, you know, if it's simple as stretching forth your hand, whatever he's telling us to do, let's do that and watch God work on our behalf. And the last thing is uh, your journey just may be your testimony. Wow. And he says, you know, in, in verse 18, he says, they will know that I am God. They will know that I am God. We just want the world, our community, Garner, uh, the city of Raleigh, the state of North Carolina, the entire country, our world, to know that he's God. And what we have to do is trust him, walk in faith. And as we walk in faith and continue, as we continue to move forward in faith, he will show us. He's not a God. I mean, we, we, we just got to walk in faith, whether we see it, whether we can understand it, whether he's moved yet or not. But because he wants to move on our behalf, we got to walk in faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. Lastly, I just want to read a, a quote I read. And it says that everything you know is based on what has already happened in, you, in your life. Everything you know is based on what has already happened in your life. And guess what? And yet your only influence right now is over the thing that have not yet happened. You can influence the things that have not yet happened, but the things that you already know, the things that have already happened are already done. You can't undo what's already done. If it was right, if it was wrong, if, if you were right, if you were wrong, whatever it was, everything you know is based on what's already happened in your life. And the only influence you have right now is over the things that have not yet happened in your life. Wow. The things that have already happened are things that got us to where we are right now. 
whether they were good, bad, or indifferent, those things has got us to where we are right now. But what we need to be concerned with is where do we, where are we going from here? Solid Rock in 2022, where are we going? What are we going to do? How are we going to move and please God? I believe God wants us moving forward in 2022. I believe that God uh, wants us to do new things in 2022. I believe God has a plan for us, unlike anything before. We have so much potential, Solid Rock Nation. We have so much potential to help build the kingdom of God in the Raleigh area. And I believe God is gonna hold us responsible to help build that kingdom. Uh, we're gonna start right, right there in our community where we are. We're gonna start right there and as God says, move forward, but we, we, we must shift and we must trust God to send a strong wind to part the waters of division, to send a strong wind uh, to part separatism, to send a strong wind that we might be more community or, or oriented, to send a strong wind. And that strong wind will allow us to cross over on dry land. And guess what? As we cross over on dry land, then we'll get to the other side and watch him destroy our enemies and bring glory to his own name. We don't have to fight. We don't have to fight. All we got to do is be obedient, cross over on dry land. And when God says so, he'll tell, He'll loose the waters, the walls that, of water that are walled up. He'll loose them on our enemies and we don't have to do anything. And he says, I'll bring glory to my name that they might know that I am the Lord and that I am with you. You are my children. Wow. So the question I raised, do you have a let's move forward attitude in 2022? Can you let some things go? Are you stuck in the past? Let me raise, let me raise the question another way. I, I, I raise the question this way. Can God trust you to trust him in 2022? Can God trust you to trust him in 2022? I just want to thank you. I want you to move forward in 2022. Uh, don't get left. Don't, don't stay behind. The cloud is moving and we are moving with the cloud. Again, let me just thank you all for joining us tonight for Bible study. Please join us Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Our services will be virtual. And again, I just wanna say thank you to one and all. Uh, blessings and peace uh, as we move forward into this brand new year uh, with, a, with a brand new vision and brand new direction. Trusting God uh, is what we're going to do. We are not afraid. We don't have a spirit of fear. God is going to bless us tremendously, just like he blessed us in the midst of the pandemic in 2021. He's going to bless us, bless us even the more in 2022. I just believe for God for it. I trust him. I declare and decree it. And I need to tell you, Solid Rock Nation, we truly are better together in love. Uh, so from Kim and I, good night. God blessings be upon you. Keep on praising him. Keep on giving him glory. Keep on, keep on looking up. And you know, and if you can't see your way out, praise your way out. Give God the praise no matter what. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Solid Rock Nation, we love you guys. Thank you for loving us. And uh, we'll see you Sunday morning, if Lord be willing. Amen. Thank you so much. Love you. Good night.